The universe and its countless stars have dazzled man for thousands of years. Few people have seen the breathtaking view from space. Stephanie Wilson is one of them. The NASA astronaut made history by becoming the second African-American woman to travel in space since Dr. Mae Jemison went into orbit in 1992. I spent time with Stephanie at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where we talked about her passion for spaceflight, her life on Earth, and how she feels about being a history maker. When I uh, joined NASA in 1996, I uh, joined uh, two other African-American women in that class. So I think of the three of us as the second wave of African-American women that have uh, traveled into space. Unfortunately, though, the numbers are small. I hope that I can help inspire uh, some young African-American women to uh, become astronauts. Stephanie first launched into space aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery in April 2006. And lift off of Discovery. Then again in October 2007. Her next mission is scheduled for April of this year. We'll have a 12-day mission to the International Space Station. We'll carry a logistics module, which will have supplies and experiments for the space station crew. And we will also have three spacewalks. After logging more than 28 days in space, it's not riding a rocket that scares her. Actually, my biggest fear is that I'm afraid of bees. <laughs> when she's not training for her next mission aboard the shuttle Atlantis, I enjoy downhill snow skiing and stamp collecting. I also enjoy uh, community service, uh, either volunteer work or um, participating in church work. Her faith has been a guiding force in her life since she was a teenager in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, a small town 100 miles from Boston. I was very fortunate to have a good friend who witnessed to me, and uh, I accepted Christ through her witness and I've been striving to have a closer walk with the Lord ever since. I do believe that my faith has played a central role in my career uh, as well as other uh, areas of my life. I hope that my faith governs uh, the decisions that I make in my life in all areas. So each time you travel in space, I'm pretty sure you have to pack light, but you never forget your Bible. I have been able to bring uh, some family photos and also a small Bible on both of my space flights. Stephanie's fascination with the universe began at the age of 13. Looking at the stars definitely made me feel that there was more than Earth, that there is more than our solar system, and that uh, there is much more to learn about in uh, learning and studying the universe. The Harvard graduate earned a master's in aerospace engineering from the University of Texas before joining NASA's astronaut corps. So what is life like aboard the space shuttle? Stephanie gave me an inside look at Building 9, a key astronaut training facility. We climbed inside the space shuttle mock-up, a life-sized version of the shuttle. So where do you sleep when you're out in space? Well, we start with our sleeping bags actually launching in this area, mm -hmm. but we can sleep anywhere. Mm -hmm. We can sleep on the ceiling, on the floor, on any of the walls. There's a tiny kitchen, better known as the galley, here in the corner. We have meal ready to eat uh, style meals that we heat up in this convection oven. Mm -hmm. Now I have to ask you this, but how do you go to the bathroom in space? Oh, good <laughs> question. Yeah. We have, is this it over here? This is it over here. It looks somewhat familiar, uh, like what you have in your home. There's a, a seat, uh, and it works on a vacuum system, mm -hmm. and there are loops where you can put your feet to keep yourself uh, seated on the seat. So, so you won't float away, right? That's right, so you won't <laughs> float away. Okay. Next, Stephanie led me up to the flight deck. And uh, I'm standing uh, uh -huh. where the commander generally sits. It's hard to stand up straight. It is. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's good to be short, but uh, <laughs> sometimes you're not short enough. <laughs> Stephanie remembers some tense moments aboard the shuttle. You train extensively for your missions, but sometimes things go wrong. Was there a particular moment where you really had to trust God? There was a particular moment. On my second flight, uh, we had a problem uh, with the solar array, and we had to send a spacewalker out on the end of the robotic arm to the end of the space station to do this repair. But it was definitely a moment that I was trusting in God. His life was in my hands and the hands of another robotic arm operator. The risky operation was a success, but the dangers of space flight are real. The Columbia tragedy in 2003 sent shockwaves through NASA and the nation. All seven crew members died when the shuttle disintegrated upon reentry. I was close to all of them. I was the lead capsule communicator for that mission. So I was the voice of the mission control team talking to the crew. It was definitely a sad day for NASA and a sad day for the world. Um, as a result of accidents, though, we learned a great deal 
um, were able to make safety improvements. Personally, I handled the Columbia tragedy by making sure that their memories are kept alive. I did what I could to help the families through their losses, and uh, I tried to remember that God is in control, and I might not understand his plan, but uh, he does have one. Despite the risk involved, Stephanie remains committed to space exploration. I do believe I have found my purpose in life. I believe that this is what I was destined to do. The space program is very important. There are many uh, things that transfer in technology, um, computers, medical equipment that are a result of the space station that apply to our everyday lives and make our everyday lives better. I do put my trust in God for protection. That helps me to have confidence in uh, all of the things that I do. With so much left to explore, there's no telling how far Stephanie's career will take her. One thing's for sure, the breadth and beauty of the universe remind her what matters most. It makes me feel that God's love is very vast and it's never ending and it's unconditional. And I'm very appreciative that he can love me for who I am.